I hope I could deal with too many more of these puns. I don't know how Nick does it. Chance here for CBJ. Drama gets it down to Nasher. Tries to shovel it in. Loose puck again around the net. CBJ doing a fantastic job here through the first near two-thirds of this game in terms of getting the puck in front of the net. But they take another penalty here. And, Drew, this has to be a goal, I would say, here for the Canadians. You need to take advantage of one of these opportunities. Yawn the left defenseman to the box. They're over for the night thus far. You've got to score. You've got the final minute 52 to do Set it. And just play, like that. Ask and you shall receive. You called him out at the beginning of the you know at the beginning of the game, the beginning of the night. It's Jerdubs who strikes. And we have again a one goal game. Drew, I think they were listening. <laughs> yeah, I mean no one more than the players wanted to not go 0 for 4, 0 for 5 on a power play in this kind of a game, especially down 3-1. to one. They scored a little bit of time left here in the second period, and there's a huge difference between being down by two after two and being down by just one with 20 minutes left. A yeah, near uh, offside call there. I want to say near offside call. Nearly walked it perfectly in time, but an offside call there on the Canadians. 30 seconds to go now down to 29.9. You see the drastic difference there in physical play. See if one of these two teams can get a late hit here. Crohn's in front, and he scores at Schlarky. His debut on the season, and a debut goal. And the Canadians have tied this one up here at the end of the second period. What a turn of events. We talked about it, Drew. Maybe some more goals here. I guess, who knows, 6-6 six, six final, 7-6. Can we end in a tie? This is going to be something <laughs> heading into the third period. I mean, I wasn't going to point out that you're instinct was to say 6-6 six, six, that would have been a tie I mean maybe pre-2004 but these teams aren't playing one of those types of games 16 shots between the two teams six goals just absolutely incredible a uh, for way for Canadians esports to finally get on the board that power play goal must have just lifted so much off of their shoulders because of the fact that they couldn't capitalize on the 90 second five on three couldn't capitalize on another power play after that they finally get one in the closing two minutes not only do they score immediately off the draw, they score again before the period comes to a close. 3-3 three, three after 2, and after the way this game started, that is more than Canadians Esports could have realistically hoped for with 40 minutes down. Who knows what exactly we are set to see here as the third period's just about to begin. Drew, at the very least, though, I, uh, I can say I'm excited for this. This has been a very entertaining night of competitive six as the Jackets in on the attack again. Great job, though. On the back pressure from the Canadians to take this one away. Jerdubs in front. Crones tries to get it. Loose puck still fighting for it. And it's Junior Pens for the Jackets. Able to come up with it. Gets it out of the zone at least for the moment. The Canadians Esports will recover and regain possession. Again, a crucial a battle here. This game, 12 of 15 for both of these teams. 8 and 9. One point separating the two of them. They have everything to play for at this stage. And right now, this matchup certainly living up to the hype. These two teams certainly looking like two teams, Drew, that are battling for their playoff lives. And, yeah, I mean, the way that this has gone it has been fantastic. I mean, CBJ Gaming, just an incredible opening onslaught to start this game. But the penalties, they already have come back to cost them because the moment they gave up that power play goal, the tide has turned entirely, and they've got to get it back. What a play, and I'm not sure if that was a glove save or not. All starting with a strong, uh, hard around shot there from Junior Pens. Found his defense partner all the way back at the other point. Nasher just denied of a hat trick opportunity. Cookie tries to lead his way through. Gets decked at the blue line for his trouble. Again, the Canadians, uh, not much of a physical team in comparison to CBJ. Great stretch pass here. Opportunity for Schlarchy. Or Schlarchy, I should say, nearly working his way through. Very impressive performance here, as mentioned in his season debut. Jerdubs tries to drop that one back to Dubs. No uh, confusion there whatsoever. And a chance here now. Fool tries to gain the line. He does. Finds Crohn's. Jerdubs back in the office. Not able to find that pass, though. Eight minutes gone here in the third period. The Habs back in on the attack, though. Jerdubs has space to work with the pass, and he scores! Slarchy gets his second of the game, and the Canadians take the lead for the first time. Nasher just not able to make his way through the traffic. It finds its way to Jerdubs somehow through drama. End result, though, a very impressive season debut. 
and the Canadians had the lead. Kid's a ringer. Uh, that's just really what's happened here. We we said he was going to be the wild card in this game, and he has proven it at this point. Two goals. It's been fantastic the way that he has contributed to sparking this offense and getting things going. And Canadians, if, if we had looked at this 10 minutes ago or 12 minutes ago of game time and said Canadians Esports was going to hold a one-goal lead midway through the third period, no one would have believed it with the way it was. It was a 3-1 game. It's now 4-3. And Canadians Esports, all of the momentum is on their side. We approach the halfway point here of this third period. Space again to work with Crohn's. Not able to make his way past Junior Pens, though, who looks to lead the rush the other way. Finds Nasher. Now it's Drama down low in the corner. Has a couple of options. Looks to hold on to it. Trying to again find a pass. In front for Nasher. What an opportunity. But so far, just dump it. Responding very well to a rough first period. Jurdub's the chance. Can't get the shot off. Huge step up hit. For Junior Pens, but an errant stretch pass from Jan has the Habs back in control in front. Schlarchy nearly gets his hat trick goal in front again. Jurdobs on the backhand, he scores. The Habs are taking over. It's 5 3 for Canadians Esports. What a turnaround! Four consecutive goals in a span of 14 and a half minutes. Unbelievable performance by Canadians Esports to just turn it up and turn it up big. They have opened the faucets and the floodgates and they have not closed them and they have broken the handles off at this point. Another opportunity here, Slarchy again on the brace, looking for the hat trick, pass through, Crohn's shoots it through the paint. What an opportunity there, CBJ rapidly running out of time to work their way back into this one. 5.48 to go here in the third period. Just when we think that first game set the pace for the night, these two teams taking it up to another level and again after this game we have our third matchup of the night so don't go anywhere but who knows with the way this one's going we might not be done still five minutes to work here for cbj slarchy able to find crones though here for the canadians back again down low to slarchy pens with the physical play able to knock him off the puck one of the best uh, just outright body checkers in the nhl community sixes one-on-one -on -one, wherever else that physical play you know, again, opening up opportunities here, but you see the Canadians shutting down the blue line expertly so. Now three minutes remaining here in regulation. CBJ letting this one get away from him. Good forecheck from Nasher. Drama tries to get it back, but a loose puck recovered. Huge step up by Junior Pens yet again. Drama can't get the shot off. Stretch pass doesn't go. Opportunity! Slarchy with the step, pulls back. Tried to find Crohn's. Not able to get it through. CBJ running out of time. We approach the final minute of play here in the third period. What a comeback this will be for the Canadians. Chance here. National top shelf. Cookie, he scores. We are not done. 55.8 to go. It's a one goal game yet again. The cannon has not been turned off for the night just yet. We have a game to go. I was thinking to myself that in this kind of a situation, you want to leave yourself at least 40, 45 seconds because of that real-time minute. If you can get on the board and cut the lead to one with 45 seconds left, you still have a chance. And we'll see. Maybe CBJ Gaming is about to rock. <laughs> Fun game. Top notch, to say the least. Maybe top shelf, along with the cookies. Chance here for the Canadians. Loose puck going to be recovered by Cookie. Throws it in front. Finds its way to the half wall. And a spectacular chop by Crones. Don't forget about that play as Junior Pens narrowly, narrowly wins that foot race with Slarchy. An icing call with 31 to go. That chop does go for icing, but a huge chance now to reset for the Canadians on this draw. The tie up along the half wall. Now up the boards. And here we go. Two on one. For the Canadians, Crones circles through in the corner, loses it. Slarchy able to recover. Back for Crones. They seem content to just, again, we called it out, soccer style, waste time in the corner. The Canadians recover again at the point. Shot fired just wide. Eight seconds to go. The Jackets cannot gain control. And this slugfest of a matchup is going to end 5-4 final in favor of the Canadians as CBJ falls just short. A phenomenal game between these two teams back and forth action the whole way through.
but a phenomenal comeback for the Canadians, all things considered. A rough start in the first period, two goals for Nasher, but it just kind of fell apart from there. I mean, Drew, what a spectacular game that was. One of the better games I can remember calling in uh, you know my time here between NHL Gamer and, of course, you know this association with Northern Arena as well. Just a phenomenal game of competitive sixes. Absolutely incredible. And again, it goes to show you how much taking a penalty can really come back to haunt you. Just the quantity building up. That was the turning point, was that last one where Canadians Esports finally broke through for a power play goal. The moment they did that, it was all Canadians Esports. CBJ Gaming managed to respond with one goal late to try and cut that lead in half. They played their physical brand of hockey after that. Did not take a penalty, by the way. I don't believe after that one that resulted in a power play goal, but it didn't matter. Canadians Esports, four consecutive goals to go from down two to up by two, and they hang on to win by one. Just uh, an incredible performance and a great job by Canadians Esports of just staying with it and hanging in there. And finally, once they broke through, that just turned the tide on everything. Well, I feel like I have to do something now after... Uh... You know, after the Canadians team just pulled that off, we'll just we'll just dump that to the side for tonight. It is the Canadians' night after all, so we'll leave that be. Uh, all things considered, felt necessary to the Canadians. You, you, you did it. You did it, it felt necessary before the Canadians beat CBJ Gaming, but uh, you know, it's, <sighs> maybe it might just be me. <laughs> maybe just maybe. But <laughs> a phenomenal game between those two teams that drew, as we always do. We like to point out you know, the key players for each of the two sides, and again. I want to start off here uh, with CBJ, actually, because now you drop out of those playoff spots. The Canadians overtake yeah. you. A really strong performance, I would say. I mean, Cookie, I mean, really everybody was was pretty solid. But I think just the the general kind of key point, the key takeaway here for them was just the lack of discipline really mm -hmm. got to them at the end of that game. And even if it didn't directly relate to a, you know, a numerous amount of power play goals against, they did give up the one to Jerdubs. It's the lost momentum uh, that they would have had uh, from allowing, you know, uh, from, you know, spending time in the box and not really being able to keep up that pressure that I think ultimately cost them. Yeah. And it's a delicate balance for a team that plays the way CBJ gaming does because they are a physical type of team they are going to throw hits and you've got to just toe that line between throwing the weight around and knocking players down and taking players out physically and sitting for four penalties in a game because uh, especially i mean the, it didn't end up costing them a goal but that 90 seconds of being down five on three was just time spent away from the offensive end for them and it eventually shortly after the second penalty elapsed resulted in Canadians Esports finally getting through for their first goal of that game. And uh, that power play goal was was the end of it. And I do have to point out also, while those uh, had been on screen, uh, I love the logos that uh, they, they pulled out there as well. I, I'm a big like branding and uh, I mean, obviously a big branding and, and logos kind of guy, uh, but I just love the look of those. I think the CBJ gaming looks like it's based off of one of the original concepts for the Columbus Blue Jackets, which was a logo that they uh went away from when they ended up going with stinger originally as their main logo uh and then the canadians esports uh love it just the, the nice mix of the colors and the the flame on uh the the controller is just a great look as well nice and sharp lines and all that stuff and kind of really fits with the montreal canadians the habs uh branding there as well so i i just love that uh, the cbj gaming logo would work great as a shoulder patch for the columbus blue jackets actual maybe an alternate jersey it would fit in great with their whole look with that whole Union Army uh, look that they've got going. I mean, I have to second that, really, when you look at some of the uh, gaming logos that we've seen. I was a big fan of uh, Anaheim's logo as well. The Florida mm -hmm. Panthers have the, uh, you know, the, the cat paw uh, with the controller. There are some phenomenal yeah. logos here throughout. So it's nice to see, of course, teams uh, really, really kind of invest and not just be like, ah, here's our logo. It says gaming. You know, these teams right. are investing uh, in the in the esports side of things, which is very very nice to see. Now, before we get over to the matchup as well, uh, for the Canadians esports team, I mean, there were some phenomenal performances. Uh, Slarchy is my player of the game for that one. A phenomenal season debut with two goals. So again, round of applause to him. I don't know again if you have a, a differing opinion on that, but it was a very uh, well rounded team effort. Yeah, no, absolutely. It had to be. We knew he was going to be the wild card going in. What would we expect? What would he do against the CBJ Gaming team? And he played 
better than most of the players on the ice. I mean, he was, even if it wasn't his season debut, that would have been one of the best performances we saw in this game. It was perhaps the most important performance we saw in this game with just the way that the timing of the goals that he scored. I have absolutely no issue. He is clearly the player of the game from that one for me as well. I, I second your opinion on that. So with that, two games down, one to go in this broadcast. We move on to our third and final game. San Jose Chilltown, the third seed as it stands in the West through 11 games going up against the seventh-ranked Chicago Phantoms. And a very interesting matchup here yet again. But with updated results, Chicago now down to eighth after uh, the performance from Anaheim Ducks Gaming earlier in this broadcast. But, Drew, you see there in terms of of the uh, point column, the third from the right, uh, a very, a very close playoff race right now. Not too many teams.